welcome to our Wednesday night service. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Let's all stand together, if you will. Page 490, revive us again. We're going to sing all four verses together tonight. So lift your voices. Sing with us, if you will. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for Thy Spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered us again on that last course tonight let's give it a good temple amen all right fourth verse together revive us again fill each heart with thy love may each soul be rekindled with fire from above hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah the glory revive us again let's remain standing they're going to keep playing we're going to get that last verse one more time now i know it's wednesday night i know you're a little tired but i like that song it's a great one and we're going to do two things miss k we need to speed it up a little bit and on that amen on that chorus we need to say amen all right give it all you got i'm scaring some of you tonight you're thinking, Pastor, it's Wednesday night. You're crazy. Well, maybe so, but it's okay. All right, let's get that last verse one more time. And when we get down that course, really, I mean, I'm telling you, amen. All right, here we go. Try it again tonight. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May so be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah. done good job you got it and uh, I love the excitement coming into a church service amen and you know we didn't we're not we're not coming to a funeral service tonight we're coming to church sometimes on a Wednesday night it can be that way sometimes you come into a, a midweek service everybody's kind of tired they've been working you know the job has you working 14.3 hours you know a day and so forth and you know you come in but you know what we need a point uh, in the day in our midweek especially where uh, we get excited about the Lord, Amen. And this is it. It's a refueling time, and uh, and your ga your car, whether it's electric or gas, whatever it is, uh, pretty soon, uh, all the miles that it goes, pretty soon, it's going to need some uh, juice, whether that's gasoline, diesel, or battery, whatever. And uh, in your Christian life, you need some spiritual juice, and uh, and we came to get that tonight, Amen. If you're glad to came to church, if you're glad you're be if you're here, I'll get it out in a minute. If you're glad to be here, would you say amen tonight? All right, good to see everybody tonight. We want to start the service with a word of prayer and ask God for his blessings tonight. We had a great group out knocking on doors tonight. I think uh, 17 out knocking on doors. We got a lot of different areas, a lot of different homes, and we had some good visits, and I'm so encouraged by that. That works. It works. But, you know, um, we had first-time visitor here Sunday as a result of getting a door hanger. We never met them. They just got a door hanger. And, God allowed them to be here Sunday morning. They said they enjoyed it. They'll hopefully be back. But, you know, I'm encouraged to see results that that does work. But, you know, regardless of whether it works or not, 
we are to carry out the Great Commission and tell others about Christ. Amen? And, uh, but uh, I appreciate all of our workers uh, fixing meals and, and going out and telling others about Christ. And I appreciate you. I know that you do. Work hard uh, in the work week and telling your co-workers and others about Christ and inviting them to church. And I want to encourage you to continue to do that. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God for his blessings upon the service tonight in a very special way. Let's pray together. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you so much for allowing us to be back in church. Thank you for good spirit amongst our people. Thank you for the work ethic and the excitement, Father, to be here tonight in this midweek service. And Father, I pray that you would bless us and help us today. Uh, Father, as we gather around your word, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts uh, through the preaching and through the teaching of your word. I pray, Father, also that you'd use our youth workers, Father, in the other building with our junior and toddler age young people tonight. I pray that you'd use them and help them to be a help to our young people and help those young people to receive Christ as their Savior and develop a, a heart for you and a hunger for godliness and righteousness and help them, Father, as they get ready to go back to school here in the next couple weeks. I pray, Father, for our service tonight that you bless in a, in a powerful way, used by the Holly with the teenagers, him and him, Miss Holly, in a powerful way tonight as well. And we'll thank you for all that you do. We love you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. You can remain seated, but I want you to sing out this next song unto the Lord with all your heart. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. We'll sing this through a couple times tonight. Let's talk about Jesus, the King of kings is he, the Lord of lords supreme throughout eternity. The great I am, the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Let's talk about Jesus, the King of kings is he, the Lord of lords supreme throughout eternity. The great I am, the way. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Amen. You know, we get talking about everything else except the Lord in our jobs and our homes and everything else. We talk about what's going on in the world around us, talk about our problems and everything else, but you know, it would benefit everybody, including ourselves, if we talk about Jesus more and more. I like that song. Thank you, Brother Holly and ladies for playing that tonight. A couple announcements really quickly for you tonight. Our offering on Wednesday night for a midweek service always goes to what? Missions. missions. And let's be faithful. I love missionaries. And I'm very grateful that we get to support the ones that we do. And uh, most of them for $150 a month and then some for $200 a month. And that includes one, uh, one of our own here. Our youth organization, I think, gets $200 a month. And we're thankful to support them as well on a regular monthly basis. And uh, I want to encourage you to pray for them. I think uh, on a regular basis we have one of our missionaries spotlighted in our bulletin. I want to encourage you on a regular basis to open that bulletin up and look inside and see which one of those missionaries that we regularly support with our finances and, and support them also with your prayers and pray for them. And uh, somebody said our finances will get them to the field, but our prayers will keep them on the field. And I'm uh, trying to pray for our uh, missionaries as a whole on a daily basis, and so let's continue to be praying for them as a church family. And then I want to encourage you to grab some outreach cards, and uh, I believe in global missions and getting out the Word of God into Africa and Europe and everywhere else, but also across the street. And, um, you know, we went out, we were knocking on doors uh, last week, I think it was, and we were uh, talking once we got back together, we were talking about uh, how many folks from India uh, that we got to meet. I mean, just tons and tons and tons, door after door, from people from the country of India. And uh, they speak English. Uh, some are broken. Some are better than others. But I I'm amazed at just five minutes from this, where I'm standing, five minutes from here, and I get in my car, we, we are on a mission field. And I'm amazed at how God has, has, has brought the mission field to us in our back door, if you will. And there's people all over the world. There's people from China and just all over the world in our just in our just little neck of the woods. And what an opportunity we have to reach them. And so let's be faithful to grab some of these as we go out and pass them out this week. And uh, it works. It works. But again, regardless of whether it works, we're being obedient to the Great Commission. And let's be faithful to that. Amen. And then, of course, a couple of real quick upcoming events. There's a sign-up sheet tonight for our Sizzling 
Summer Sunday Night Number 2. Raise your hand if you got to be a part of that, our last Summer Sizzling Summer, summer Night. <laughs> I can't see it. Um, but uh, we had a grand time with that. We had hot dogs and ice cream. We're planning to do that again, and we're looking forward to it. And it'll be next Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, August 15th. And again, there's a sign-up sheet. A lot of folks have already signed up, and I want to encourage you to help us with that. The church provides the hot dogs and the hot dog buns and uh, the ice cream, but if you can provide uh, the other things, such as toppings and uh, potato salad and chips and all that good stuff, we would be very grateful for that. So keep that in mind after the service. And then also, there's another sign-up sheet for our summer ladies' meeting. This will be taking place Thursday, August 26, 7 o'clock p.m. And I know this is about three weeks out, but I want to go ahead and encourage you ladies to sign up. Some of you ladies have, uh, attend these. A lot of you ladies attend these. These are quarterly. These are with my wife, and she does a great job. We have a special guest speaker. Ms. Debbie Frederick is going to be speaking that, Lord willing. And uh, you'll have a Bible study. You'll have refreshments. You'll have uh, games I think they normally play. I don't know. I just hear say. I've never gone to one of these things. As a, a, all these ladies, but they have a grand time. They'll be over in Heritage Hall, so sign up tonight after the service for that. And then also, Saturday morning, we'll be going out again and knocking on doors, inviting folks to church, uh, rain or shine, and we'll be meeting in the Activity Center 930 for some breakfast foods and then going out for about an hour, so keep that in mind, if you will, and encourage you to be a part of that. And then also, men's prayer. We just started that back up a few weeks ago. We've been having a great time on Saturday evenings, 8 o'clock, in here in the auditorium. We get around here and pray. Each one of us takes some time to pray for our church and the needs of our church and the desires uh, that God has placed in my heart for our church and the vision for our church. And, and I want to encourage you men, if you're able to, to come to be a part of that Saturday evening at 8 o'clock. All right, keep that in mind. Then also services on Sunday. I'm looking forward to a great day here Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning uh, and Sunday night was an was a unusual day. Our Sunday night attendance almost surpassed our Sunday morning attendance. And if you're here, you know what I'm talking about. We had so many people out on vacations and so forth on Sunday morning. And then a lot of people kept, was coming back, I guess, on Sunday nights. And the Sunday night crowd was tremendous and uh, great for a summer Sunday night. And I'm very grateful for that and encouraged by that. And, uh, and so I'm looking forward to this Sunday, Sunday school at 10 o'clock. Let's be faithful to the house of God and, uh, and, uh, and be in our place, come early, and expecting great things from the Lord and praying that God will do great things, that people will be saved, new families will be added to the church. And uh, so on Sunday, 10 o'clock, Sunday school, Sunday morning, 11, Sunday evening, 6.30. And it's also a back-to-school Sunday, so Sunday morning we'll take a portion of the Sunday morning service and, and uh, give uh, our young people, uh, they're going back to school, an opportunity to tell us a little bit about where they're going to back to school so we can be praying for them as they get back. And then also we've got a gift to give them. And so keep that in mind, if you will. All right, exciting days ahead. Let's all stand together one more time all over the building. Everyone standing, smiling, singing out this next song, Unto the Lord with all your heart. Is the shepherd's voice I hear Out in the desert dark and drear Calling the sheep who gone astray Far from the shepherd's fold away Bring them in, bring them in Bring them in from the fields of sin Bring them Let's turn around and fellowship tonight. Teenagers are dismissed.
Let's sing it first together tonight. Who go and help this shepherd kind? Help him the wandering ones to find. Who will bring the lost ones to the fold? Where they'll be sheltered from the cold. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them hear their cry out on the mountains wild and high hark tis the master speaks to thee go find my sheep wherever they be bring them in bring them in bring them in from the fields of sin bring them in bring them in tonight and go ahead and take your Bibles to the book of Proverbs tonight. Proverbs chapter 30 and again thank you so much for being faithful tonight to the house of God and uh, so good to see everybody tonight. Midweek service and uh, in the house of God Wednesday night. Proverbs chapter number 30 in your Bibles tonight it's so good to see you. And uh, see some folks that's been good. We have missed. It's good to see Miss Allen tonight. And uh, and if you haven't got to see her, good to go by and see her tonight <clears throat> if you're able to. And we're so thankful that God has protected her and the, through the car wreck, and she is doing good. And it's good to see Frank too, by the way. And uh, so it's good to see everybody tonight. And this goes good to see Barry and Cynthia. Is this you guys' first midweek service? No, you've been here midweek before. All right, so it's good, so good to see you guys tonight. If you haven't got to meet Barry and Cynthia, sweet couple have been visiting our church the last uh, couple months, I guess, and it's so good to have them. And uh, I'm going to miss somebody. I better quit because I always miss people. It's so good to see Jeff and Angela Sheik, their boy, their sons. It's good to see them back. They've been visiting with us for a good while now. Sweet, sweet people. I encourage you, if you haven't got to meet, if you know somebody, some people come up to me sometimes, they say, I don't know this person, I don't know that person. Well, go by and introduce yourself to them. And uh, that's how you get to know somebody, amen? And uh, so uh, get to know them and welcome them. And I know you do, you already do that. And I'm grateful for that. Proverbs chapter number 30 tonight in your Bible. Proverbs chapter number 30. And uh, if you would like to get out tonight uh, of service uh, 15 minutes early, raise your hand. If you'd like to get out 15 minutes early, Okay, God bless you. It's not going to happen tonight, but uh, I just wanted to ask you about that. Proverbs chapter 30, and I'm joking tonight. You may, I don't know. Proverbs chapter 30, look with me in verse number 24. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 24 tonight. Let's begin reading. When you found your place, say amen. amen. Verse number 24, Proverbs chapter 30. The Bible says, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. Verse 25, the ants are people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Verse number 26, the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. Verse 27, the locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. Verse 28, the spider taketh hold, with her hands and is in king's palaces. Let's stop there and let's pray one, once more tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word tonight. And I thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for this time that we can come again and fellowship one with another. We can laugh. We can bear one another's burdens. We can pray for one another. We can comfort one another through the word of God. And I pray tonight for all the other workers, fathers, they're teaching the word of God to children and teens tonight that you'd use them, help them. And use me tonight for just a few moments to be a blessing to your people. And uh, speak to me and speak through me. Give me clarity of thought, mind, please. And we'll thank you for all that you do. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you about uh, this uh, title, What We Learn from the Seemingly Insignificant. What We Learn from the Seemingly Insignificant. Now, the book of Proverbs, of course, uh, is written by King Solomon. 
And Solomon was, of course, the son of David, and he ruled the nation of Israel for 40 years. And at the beginning of his reign, uh, if you go back and study this out, Solomon made a, a massive sacrifice in a, in a way of worship to the Lord. He basically wanted to start off his, his reign in Israel to say, God, I'm going to put you first. God, you allowed me to sit on the throne of my father David. You have been good to me. You have given me, uh, you, you, uh, you know, you have used my father David. Now you've, you've been good to me. Lord, I want to put you first in the kingdom. He made this humongous sacrifice unto the Lord. And God uh, came to Solomon and uh, spoke to him and said, Solomon, uh, if you'll ask me something that you want, that I, I'm going to give you whatever you want. And Solomon could have asked for a lot of things. Couldn't he? he could have asked for money. He could have asked for uh, just uh, peace for all of his enemies. He could have asked for a lot of things. But he asked simply for wisdom and discernment to know how to lead the children of Israel, to know how to lead the people of his kingdom. He basically asked God for wisdom. And God blessed him with wisdom. You know that, most of you. And uh, not only did he bless Solomon with wisdom, but God said, Solomon, because you ask for wisdom, because you ask uh, for, for something uh, wise, uh, I'm going to bless you with riches. I'm going to bless you with peace with your enemies. I'm going to bless you with so much more. And he did. And the book of Proverbs, of course, is uh, inspired by God. And there's sayings of this wisest man. The Bible says that Solomon was the wisest man ever at that time. And he was the wisest man there will ever be, uh, other than the Lord Jesus Christ, of course. And and so the book of Proverbs are really precious to me. And, and I know they're precious to you as well because these are inspired by sayings of God. This is the word of God. And it's also God is using and funneling these words to you and I through this, this wisest man that's ever lived other than Jesus Christ. And I would encourage you, uh, if you're not daily or regularly somehow in the book of Proverbs, to begin uh, studying the book of Proverbs or simply just reading the book of Proverbs on a regular basis. Uh, somebody said an apple a day keeps the what? Doctor. Well, I don't know if that's true or not, but the book of Proverbs, or a proverb a day, will keep the sin away. It really will. It'll help you. And you can use so many different sayings for that. But uh, the book of Proverbs will help you. And it's funny because there's, there's 31 chapters. And a lot of months, of course, either have 30 or 31 days in the month. And it, so it works out great. You can go through the book of Proverbs 12 times in a year. And it will be very beneficial to any Christian that is serious about living for the Lord to get in the book of Proverbs is one of the simplest books of the Bible, of the 66 books of the Bible. It is one of the easiest to understand. It is one of the, it is so rich. You can get two, two or three thoughts sometimes out of just simply one verse. And it will just help you to meditate on it. But it will help you just simply just to read it every morning as you're eating your fruity pebbles, okay? Or your fruit loops or whatever you have in the morning, okay? Uh, as you're drinking your coffee, read the Word of God and, and especially read the book of Proverbs. It'll help you with wisdom, especially in the Christian life. Now, in the book of Proverbs, we find a, a, a lot of gems, such as what we found tonight. These verses, verses 24 through 28, what we just read tonight, uh, talk about some things that we can learn from. Uh, some insignificant, really, things that we can learn from. And how we can learn from, really, everyone and everything. Uh, I've been taught this uh, gr growing up. Uh, let every person be your teacher. Okay, so you learn. If somebody uh, goes to jail, okay, if one of your buddies goes to jail, unfortunately, learn what caused them to go to jail. Don't do that, right? If somebody is, is successful in the Christian life, learn from them. Learn what calls them for God's blessings to be upon their lives. Hey, listen, sometimes young couples need to look at a couple that's been married for 50 and 60 years and still holding hands, amen, need to find out, hey, what are they doing? Because they're human. Sometimes we look at other marriages it's like they're perfect, but this not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Especially when you have two people, but we need to learn from others. What makes them tick? You ever look at somebody and think, what makes them tick? What causes them to have the spirit that they have? What causes them to have a spirit of graciousness, a spirit of love, joy? What causes them to keep on going, being faithful, 
uh, through the obstacles of life so we can learn from anyone and everything. And tonight we're going to see how we can learn from these four uh, pretty much insignificant creatures that God has created, but I believe we'll see how God has created them, no doubt for many purposes, but for one particular purpose, and that is so we can learn from them. And I want you to see this tonight. Um, and, and by the way, we're always to continue learning, okay, in every aspect. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12, not as though I had already attained. In other words, Paul said, I haven't reached the top. I don't know it all, okay. And, uh, but he said, I, haven't, I, though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Paul said, I'm not perfect. But I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I also have apprehended of Christ Jesus. Uh, Paul said, I'm not perfect. I'm still trying to learn and to gain knowledge and to grow in the Christian life. So, number one, I want us to notice what we learn from the seemingly insignificant. The first creature there, verse number 24, that we learn that is a pretty insignificant creature is the ant. So, what we learn from the ants. Look back with me, excuse me, but look in verse number 25. I'm sorry, verse number 25, the ants are a people not strong, yet they say the next word with me, church. What is it? Out loud, prepare. They prepare their meat in the summer. Raise your hand if you've ever had those little beady black ants in your kitchen. Drives me nuts. We have them and we, they come back every year and uh, drives me nuts. I don't know, you know, and we, it seems like they, 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 it seems like I, I'll try something to treat them or something, you know, and, and uh, something will work for just a, sh a short while, and then they learn to overcome that. And they come back again. You know what those little guys are looking for? They're looking for food or something. I guarantee you, they're trying to take my Oreos out of my cover, and they're trying to take that back into their little ant farm or whatever it is, wherever it's at, down in my house somewhere, and they're storing things up. They are preparing their little kingdom for the wintertime, whatever it is. They are a preparer. They prepare their meat in the summer. They go out in the picnic tables. They go out. We, my, my kids and I were going out riding bicycles the other day. And they said, Daddy, can we stop and get something cold to drink? And I said, sure. So we stopped at a little place. And they had a little picnic table outside. So we stopped there. And my wife was at a ladies meeting. And we stopped there. And, and uh, we sit down at this uh, little picnic table and I had all three kids and, and um, it was a feat in itself to have all three of myself out and out, out and about and we, we, we sat down at the picnic tables and here's all these big old red ants all over this thing and we said well we can't sit here you know but they're everywhere they're everywhere and they're not strong are they I mean my little two year old could that ants no more right and they're not strong, they're not a very strong creature, but God says, hey, I want you to look at the ant. I created it for a purpose. One of those purposes, perhaps, is that fact that we can learn something from them, and that is they prepare. From the ants we learn preparation. And can I encourage you to learn from an ant? Just like an ant, he works together, by the way, as uh, far as we know, he works, they work together in, 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 in transporting food and supplies and preparing and laying up store. And may we learn, to that, learn from that to prepare in every area of our life. Can I encourage you, Christian, to prepare for eternity, the life hereafter? I want you to think about it. Let's put something in perspective. How long, if we live a long life, how long are we going to live realistically speaking. I don't know if I'm going to make it to 70. I mean, I'm working hard eating all this ice cream and hot dogs and all that, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. I hope to be, I hope to be living till 70. But you know what the truth of the matter is? Listen, if we live 85, 90, that's a long life, isn't it? That's a long life. If we live 95, whatever, some folks make 100 and even over 100. But let's say you live 110 years. Let's say you're 110 years old. Look at that in light of forever, in the light of eternity, the fact that a thousand years as is one day with the Lord. Look at that and put that in perspective. And sometimes even Christians, we need to put it in perspective and look at the fact that, hey, if I'm saved, that means I'm living forever. Amen? 
My home is in heaven with the Lord. The Bible says that our, our citizenship is in heaven. That is where my home is. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. I'm to be a light passing through in this dark world and tell everybody else about Jesus as most of I can because and tell them about a great place I get to go and I don't have to spend eternity in hell. And so we're, we're, our home is in heaven. And that, excuse me, and that's where we're going to spend forever and ever and ever. So we need to prepare for the, 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 where we're going to spend the most part of our lives. Wouldn't you agree? So prepare for eternity. Prepare first for the salvation. Listen, if you're here tonight, I know it's Wednesday night, but if you do not know Christ as your personal Savior, the Bible says in the Old Testament, in Amos chapter 4, verse number 12, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. And if you're not saved tonight, I want to encourage you to trust Christ as your Savior and prepare for uh, heaven. And the only way that you can prepare for heaven is to trust Christ as your personal Savior. But can I help you with this? If you are saved, would you say amen tonight? If you are saved, may the Lord help us to prepare others to get there. Amen? And we ought to be telling everybody we can, looking for every opportunity possible, just like the Apostle Paul we talked about Sunday morning, looking for opportunities to tell others and share the gospel with other people and helping them be prepared for eternity. I'd hate to think that there was somebody that I worked with on the, work jo- on the workplace and I worked with them for 20, 30 plus years and I never told them about Christ. And perhaps at the, at, the, at the great white throne, I watched as they were cast into the lake of fire. And I wonder, I don't know this, but I wonder if I would not see them, if God would not allow me to see the fact that if I had just simply witnessed to them, perhaps they wouldn't have to be cast into the lake of fire. I tell you what, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know that, but I tell you, I, I want to be motivated. I need to be more motivated, even as a pastor, to tell others about Christ and to pass out outreach cards and, and anybody that I meet. And I, I want to be a witness unto the Lord and help people prepare for the life hereafter. And then prepare not only with salvation, but preparing for eternity uh, with investments. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 19, most of you are familiar with these verses, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor dust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. I want to, you know, so many people, they're, they're saving up in this compartment, they're saving up in this department, and they're saving up in this area of their lives, and they have riches beyond uh, our water streams in, in certain areas. And the truth of the matter is, they are not going to take a penny of that with them. They can be buried with it, but it's not going to go in eternity with them. And I want to encourage you with something tonight. I want to lay up treasures in heaven where I'm going to be living for the most part of my life. You say, Pastor, how do we do that? With good works, amen? Because the Bible teaches us that there's crowns that are going to be given that we're going to receive of the Lord that we're able to lay at His feet to say, Lord, You are worthy and I, and I worked hard and, and, and one of those fruits of, of our works is a crown to lay at Jesus' feet and, and, and treasure and investments up in heaven. Prepare not only for eternity with salvation, but prepare for eternity with investments. And then let's prepare for eternity with godly living. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the good things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. I, I'm going to stand, and you are too, going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and I'm going to receive those things uh, according in this life, whether I did good things for God or whether I did bad things as a child of God, I'm going to receive those, those things um, according to my living. And I want to lay up for myself treasures in heaven. I, I, I understand that it's important to save and prepare the f- for the future. I understand that. But look at the perspective and look how long you're going to live down here and look at where you're going and how long you're going to be up here. And that motivates me to prepare for eternity. Not only may we prepare for eternity, but may we prepare spiritually for this life. May we prepare for eternity, but may we prepare spiritually. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 18, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Prepare for eternity, but pray, prepare spiritually right now. We're to prepare spiritually by several things concerning the Word of God. 
If you want to grow spiritually, which I believe you do because you're here on Wednesday night, you have a hunger to, to, to increase in your spiritual life. You have a desire to grow spiritually. And if you're going to grow spiritually, and I'm going to go somewhere with this, so hang tight for a minute. If you're going to grow spiritually, then it's going to come from that book you're holding in your lap right now. It's going to come from reading the Word of God, simply reading it on a regular, consistent basis. Listen, if all you read is is Psalms, one chapter out of Psalms every day, start there. That's a good place to start. If all you, I I, I tell you, you say, Pastor, I bet you read 30 chapters a day. No, I don't. I'm going to tell you what I do. I read about three chapters out of my Bible a day. Three chapters. Now, that's not including studying. Now, I spend a lot of time studying, of course, each day. But for my reg, this is me, not as a pastor, but me as a child of God, as a Christian. I read three chapters out of my Bible. I try to read three chapters. Sometimes it's two. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it may be more than three. But I try to read at least three chapters a day every morning. And I tell you what, that is enough to charge my battery. It may take me ten minutes to read those three chapters. Hello? It don't take long to read three chapters. Maybe twelve. And just reading it, simply reading it, and that'll charge your battery. You need more than Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. And listen, the, the people that God lays on my heart uh, to teach a Sunday school class or to become a deacon or, or whatever it may be in a position of service, I always pray about that. But I, 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 we're looking for people in areas to serve that have a daily walk with God that are growing spiritually and they are preparing spiritually and they are growing in grace in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And what better way to do that than simply reading the Word of God? You say, Pastor, why in the world are you harping on that so much? Because I'm convinced that we are not doing it. Because if we were doing it, we wouldn't do some things that are contrary to the Word of God. And when we get rebuked, we say, what was that for? Well, if he's reading the Word of God, you might know that. Let's read the Word of God and implement it. Not only just read it, but study it out. Uh, Rightly dividing the Word of God and applying the Word of God. Uh, Again, I'm convinced that Christians across America, and I'm not talking about our church. I believe our church people uh, read the Word of God. But Christians across America, I'm concerned that we have left off the Word of God and we picked up our opinions and our perspectives and and elevated them above the Word of God. Pick up the Word of God, church. Read the Word of God and implement and apply the Word of God to your life. If God says do something that you're not doing, let's start doing it. Amen? If God says don't do something in His Word and you're doing it, then get rid of it. Let's get in and live in the Bible. Somebody say amen tonight. We prepare spiritually by reading and studying and applying the Word of God. We prepare spiritually by trusting in God. There's going to be times in your life when you're going to have to trust God. It may be for your marriage. It may be for your children. It may be for a difficult circumstance. It may be through uh, your finances. Whatever it may be, there's going to, it may be for your job. It might be for a relationship in your family. Whatever it may be, there's times when you have to trust God. I love the verse, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Let's get in the word of God and trust God. That will grow you spiritually when you say, God, I'm going to take a leap of faith. Take a leap of faith. I'm going to trust you for this. I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to turn. I'm going to trust you, and you will see that you will grow spiritually through that. We're talking about the ants and how they prepare, and how we need to prepare for eternity, how we need to prepare spiritually by reading the Word of God, by trusting God, and by being faithful to God. You're going to grow by being simply faithful to God. I'm looking at some of our church family, and some of you have been coming to church for a year, some six months, some less, some longer. Some of you have been coming 30, 40 years to this church. Different things that you've been coming to this church, and you have grown simply by being faithful to hear the Word of God. And you're going to be faithful. And, 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 and we learn uh, sometimes uh, through, through the trials and the tribulations and the hardships of life to remain faithful. When we're faithful through those things, we learn that God gets us through those things. That God goes with us through the storm. And we look back after the storm passes over. And we look back and we say, wait a minute, you know, God helped me through that hard time. And I'm thankful I didn't give up because God's grace was sufficient and God get me through 
through, got me through it, and you will grow spiritually through being faithful. I think about Joseph and how Joseph was faithful. He was faithful although he was sold by his brothers. He was faithful although he was lied upon and it caused him to go to prison. He was faithful although he went through the hardships that he went through. He was faithful and look at the end of his life, how God exalted him and used him in a great way simply because he didn't quit. He didn't give up. He kept on being faithful unto the Lord. So we learn from ants because they prepare. Okay, may God help us to prepare for eternity and prepare spiritually. And by the way, through preparing ourselves spiritually, we are more able to be used of the Lord. I think we've already talked about that a little bit. But number two, not only what we learn from the ants, but what is the next creature there? Colonies. We have four people that know. All right, let's look at our Bibles in verse 26. You look sleepy tonight, or you sound sleepy tonight. All right, look at verse 26. The conies are but a feeble folk. Now, we know back in verse 25, we know the ants are feeble. We can just squish them, okay? Uh, We know they're not strong. And notice the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. They may be feeble, they may not be strong like the ants, but they are smart because of where they live. The conies. The coney is like a rabbit. The Google coney. Something, it's like a uh, rodent type creature. And it's kind of like a rabbit in the rabbit family. And they're not very strong. They're kind of like you know, a prairie dog or something like that. And they're not very strong. They're not very uh, a great beast of the, the wild, you know, and all that. But they are smart. God says, I want you to learn something from the coney because of their habitation, where they make their fortress, and that is in the rock. Now, the rock for you and I represents who? Jesus Christ. The rock represents Jesus Christ. And may we learn from the ants in preparation, areas of preparation, but may we learn from the colonies in areas of habitation. Come here for a minute and listen. Strong winds of life are going to blow, okay? And Problems are going to come. Storms are going to come in your life. Somebody said very wisely, you are either in a storm right now, or you just got through one, or you're getting ready to go in one. And storms are a part of everybody's life, whether they're a child of God or not. And just because you get saved doesn't mean the storms stop blowing. As a matter of fact, in some cases, it means the battle ramps up a little bit. Because when you get on spiritual fire for God, you start doing things for God, you're going to find the oppression of the devil is there to face you. And it's sometimes, in some cases, it gets harder. But I'm thankful that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that is the course of Christ. But when we learn from the conies where to go and where to hide when the storms of life blow. And if you're going and if I'm going to continue in our Christian life with eagerness and excitement about knocking on doors and getting in the choir and teaching our classes on Sunday morning and, and whatever and, and, and telling others about Christ, and if we're going to continue with eagerness and excitement in the Christian life, then we're going to have to run to the fortress. We're going to have to run to the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ when the storms blow. I want you to turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter 7. If you still have your Bibles open, Matthew, and if you don't, turn up, open up Matthew chapter 7 tonight and look in with me in verse number 24. And while you're turning in Matthew chapter 7, I want to remind you this, that sometimes we make the wrong decision of where to fortify. We make the wrong decision of where to, ha- to make our habitation. We make the wrong decision of where to hide when the storms of life come. A bad decision of where to fortify when storms of life blow is your feelings. Do not base, do not hide in your feelings. Do not, do not, uh, and, and you say, Pastor, well, God has given me a conscience. Absolutely. But I, 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 and do not put your confidence in how you feel about a certain situation, a certain uh, uh, person, or anything. Don't rest, don't hide in your feelings. Do not hide or fortify in your finances. Listen, friend, I think we, we understand how fragile economy can be, right? We understand how fragile life can be. And that dollar is not as mighty as it is as some people may think it is. And it can crash, and and it can leave us uh, hopeless if you've got your hope in that. Don't fortify in your feelings. Don't fortify in finances. And I want to say this, and hang on here. 
Don't fortify in your friends. Now, I understand that some of us have good friends, and I thank God for the friends that God has placed in my life. But let me tell you something. Sometimes well-meaning people can lead you in the wrong direction. And I want to say, don't, don't fortify there. Yes, get counsel. Absolutely, that's scriptural. Yes, get advice. Absolutely, it's scriptural. But don't use, that, don't use those finances and feelings and friends. And in any other area, don't use that as your habitation when the storms of life blow. You say, well, where do I go? Because you've knocked all of them out, Pastor. Where do I go? I'm glad you asked. Are you in Matthew chapter 7? Three of you are. Matthew chapter 7. I'm not. Matthew chapter 7. Look with me in verse number 24. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 24. The Bible says this. Jesus said this. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken to him a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended. In other words, the storm's coming. And the rain descending, descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, the winds blew. Here comes a storm, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Why? Because they did not have their habitation upon or in the rock. And any time that you do not place your habitation and your fortress in the the Lord and upon the word of God, when the storms come, your life is going to shipwreck. Listen to me carefully tonight. When storms of life come, and they will, when storms of life come and you are hiding and you have your confidence in your friends or your finances or your feelings or any other thing other than the word of God, then your life is going, you're going to see your life start crumbling. Because it's not built upon the rock, not built where the honey, the conies, not the honies, but the conies, the conies are not a strong people. And by the way, listen, I'm not very strong either. By the way, amen? I'm not strong in my own power, but I can run to the rock when the storm comes. I can run to the word of God. And when I find my foundation and my hope and my security in the Word of God, when the storms blow and the rains come and the lightning strikes and the thunder sounds and the floods rise, I can still remain faithful because I found it upon, I've got my habitation and my security, my foundation is upon the Word of God that does not change. Put your habitation like the conies. God said, learn from the ants. Learn from their preparation. Learn from the conies. Learn where they hide. They're not a strong people, but they learn where to hide. Learn from them. Make your habitation the rock, the word of God. Not only make your, uh, the word of God our fortress and our habitation, but may we learn to make prayer our fortress and foundation. I want you to turn with me. This is Bible study night, so turn with me to Psalms chapter 18. So I don't want to keep turning so much. Well, come Sunday morning, we won't make you turn as much, but tonight for our Bible study, we're going to turn a little bit. Psalms chapter 18. Psalms chapter number 18 in your Bible, and uh, look with me there. And uh, these are great scripture references here. They tremendously help me in my Christian life. Psalms chapter number 18, look with me please in verse number 1. This is David, the psalmist David writing here. Listen to what he says. In Psalms chapter 18 and verse number 1, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Why? Because David wasn't strong, but he served a strong God. Verse 2, the Lord is my, say it, rock. How about that? And my, what? Fortress. And my deliverer, my God, my strength. In whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And I say amen there. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. David learned from the conies. I don't know if maybe David taught Solomon this trait of watching the little insignificant, seemingly insignificant animals like the ants and the conies. But David knew the principle of the fact that he wasn't strong. So when he needed help from his enemies round about him, he would run to God who was his rock and who was his fortress. And when the storms of life around David blew, he would pray unto God. So habitation, uh, a fortress that will keep you faithful and keep you grounded in times of trouble 
in times of storms in your life is the Word of God and prayer. I'm convinced again tonight that we do not use that. When storms of life come, we go to social media. When storms of, and there's nothing wrong with social media, it is a tool that we are currently using as I speak right now. It is a tool. But don't let it become your habitation. Uh, listen, friend, my wife over there is my very best friend other than the Lord. I love that girl. She is, she is such a big help to me. But the very moment that I start depending upon her as my rock and my fortress, listen carefully, the very moment I start depending upon her as my rock and my fortress rather than the word of God in prayer, I am making a drastic bad decision. Because if I'll make the word of God and prayer my rock and my fortress, listen, I'm building upon a firm foundation, amen? Uh, I'm going to find sometimes, you ever come home sometimes to your husband, ladies, and you both work jobs? You ever come home sometimes and you are exhausted, ladies, and you're depleted, and you're hoping that and praying that when you pull in the driveway, your husband has a meal for you under candlelight, the air condition is on. The kids have their baths and they're getting ready to go into bed. And you're so excited about what he's... And instead of all of that, the kids are running around crazy. There's no food in the house. You've asked your husband to go shopping and he's not done it. The house is in disarray. And you come home. You say, Lord, you didn't answer my prayer. What is this? And he looks at you with red eyeballs. He said, I want to tell you about the day I just had. <laughs> you see, you can't put, you can't make your rock and your fortress your, your spouse. God puts you together, yes. But to go together to God in prayer. Again, she is my very best friend. I go to her and I ask her sometimes. I say, uh, sweetie, what should we do about this? Or what, should, what do you think about this? And I get her advice and I lean upon her. But you understand there's sometimes that she uh, is going through a battle too. And if your friend that you're putting conf your ultimate confidence, if you are putting your ultimate confidence in your friend, maybe they're going through a hard time as well. And they may not give you sound advice in their hard time. That's why our habitation must be to the Lord in prayer and the word of God, just like the Honies, the Conies. All right, so number three, quickly. Whoa, we've got to hurry to get done. Number three, what is the third animal? The locust. All right, some, more people getting involved as we go. Here we go. Verse number 12, 27, the locusts have no king. That's interesting. They don't have a leader. Yet go they forth, all of them, by bands. Well, wasn't that one of the plagues in Egypt? Was the locust? And well, I tell you what, when a locust, I looked it up, I Googled it, and a locust may be by itself. One of them is not so bad. But when they get together, they can destroy a whole plantation of crops. They can even cause starvation in a country because when they come together, and the secret that we must learn about the locust is communication. Communication, they do not have a leader, but they have this art of communication. And can I encourage you and challenge you to learn from the locust to communicate? Communication is a key in a relationships. Most of us or some of us do not maybe have a problem with communicating. However, to whom we communicate, when and how is oftentimes where we struggle. It is important to whom we communicate. Can I encourage you to communicate unto the Lord? I'm not going to uh, read it or, or, or ask you to turn to it for sake of time tonight, but write it down. Look at it when you get home in Psalms chapter 142. Turn there and look at it, how we need to communicate unto the Lord. Listen, friend, uh, if, if my burger is not right when I go to Dario, I'm going to take it back up there, right? And I'm going to say to that person, that, you know, the 18-year-old the, the, the or whatever that's back behind that counter. And I'm going to say, look, this burger's not right. And they bring it back to me, it's still not right. Guess who I'm going to? I'm not going back to the 18 year -old. I'm going back to the manager. There's nothing wrong with 18-year-old. 18, 18 There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just, I was once, one time. Sometimes I act like an 18-year-old still. But the truth of the matter is, um, I'm going to go to the manager. I'm going to go to somebody who knows what's going on and who has the ability to turn things around for me and maybe give my meal for free, all right? 
I'm joking, of course. I'm not a cheapskate. But the truth of the matter is, I'm going to go to find out somebody who's in charge, who has the ability. And listen, friend, uh, when, when, uh, when we need to communicate, communicate to the Lord. Tell your problems to the Lord before you tell everybody else in, this, in the whole world that you, that, that, that the problems that you're going through on social media. And again, there's nothing wrong. I'm not beating social media tonight. I'm not. I'm just simply saying we need to talk to God about it. First and foremost, and a lot of times God will solve that problem. Sometimes we stir things up by telling everybody and the brother before the Lord. And we say, help me pray about this, help me pray about this, help me pray about this. Well, let me ask you, have you prayed about it? Have you prayed about it? Have you fasted about it? How serious are we actually about our problem, or are we just wanting to spread it everywhere? Communicate first and foremost unto the Lord, because he's in control. If he can turn the king's heart, then he can solve your problem. Amen. Communicate to your spouse. Listen, husband, you need your wife. Spouse, you need your husband. Kids, all our kids are young people are gone. Uh, if you watch this, some of you parents may need to force your children to watch this segment of the, this, the service tonight. Uh, kids, you need your, your spouse. Your need, you know, kids, you need your mom and dad. You need your mom and dad. Uh, communicate to your spouse. Communicate to your children. Uh, mom and dad, they are our responsibility. Communicate unto them. It is important to whom we communicate. It is important how we communicate with one another. Can I encourage you to communicate with seasoning? Oh, my. Verse number six, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. We had some watermelon tonight before the, our outreach. Uh, didn't get any uh, watermelon, but I saw Jody putting salt all over his watermelon. When I see salt being poured out, now I, I know salt is in food. I know that, and I eat it. But when I see salt being poured out upon food, it just, it makes me clog up. I think to myself, heart attack all over. Now I know, uh, I don't know what that disease is called. I, I know I have several, but, um, but uh, the, the salt and so forth, it just gets to me. But it's better with salt, isn't it? I don't want food without salt. I just don't want to see you putting it on there. On my food, you can put it all over yours if you want to. All over, whatever. But to communicate with seasoning, we need the salt. Let your speech be always the grace seasoned with salt that you may know how to answer every man. Communicate with seasoning. Communicate with wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11, Listen, a fool othereth all his mind. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I want you to think about this. How many times have you heard somebody say, Well, I'm just going to give them peace of my mind. Well, time out, they better be careful how much they give. Because they might not have much left. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. The Bible says, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 28, the heart of the righteous studieth to answer. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Before you answer, think about it. Before you reply, that there's been times people text me, and I'll take a day to, to think about what, to, what I'm going to reply. Because I want to be careful. I'm not being pinned on a rose of my lapel. I'm just simply saying, I want to be careful. I want to, I want to be careful. I want to be careful. Be careful about how you answer. My son was arguing with my two-year-old last night. I don't know what about one of those many arguments. My son says, Daddy, she's arguing with me. And I said, Mike, it takes two to argue. <laughs> Might have been the first time he's ever heard that. You've heard it all your life. But it takes two to argue. Is that true or false? It really does. It really does. We can stop a lot of arguing if we would think about these biblical principles tonight. What is the last one? We've learned from the ants, we've learned from the locusts, we've learned from the conies. The last one is spiders in verse 28. We're done. Verse 28, you've listened so well tonight. Thank you. Verse 28, the spider taketh hold with her hands. As in king's palaces, we learn from the spider the art of dedication. Raise your hand if you have ever torn down a spider web. By the way, no, I'm not going to say it. it. Raise your hand if you've ever torn down a spider web and it was back the next day. Look at the hands. Wow. <laughs> them little creatures are dedicated. Now, I can't stand them. I want to kill everyone I can. 
I don't like spiders. If you like spiders, hey, listen. But Lord, bless, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But I, I don't like spiders. I don't, really know any, I don't really know anybody that does. But those little creatures are dedicated. And they're fast. And they build these webs. And they're dedicated at building those webs. As in, uh, even in king's palaces. And that's a smart one to build one there. And may we learn from the spider to be dedicated. I'm going to share this verse with you. I'm almost done. In Psalms chapter 57, verse number 7, the Bible says, My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. The psalmist said, I, My heart is fixed. I'm not going to be wishy-washy. My heart is fixed unto you, God. I'm going to keep on keeping on with my heart dedicated unto you. May we be dedicated unto the Father. May we be dedicated unto our Heavenly Father. Our theme this year of 2021 is what, church? Committed. And let's be committed and dedicated unto our Father, His church. Amen? Let's be dedicated unto the house of God. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what happens. But listen, friend, I can be dedicated unto the Lord. Amen? And with all my being, I want to do my very best to be dedicated unto the church which He has established and built. And I want to be dedicated unto His Word. Amen? Be dedicated to the Father. May we be dedicated to our families. Husbands, be dedicated to your wife. Be dedicated to those kids. Be dedicated to your mom and dad. Be dedicated to your family. And may we be dedicated to our friends. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, A friend loveth at all times. Be dedicated. Be a dedicated Christian. You can close your Bibles. Musicians are going to come. We're going to close. You've been so patient. I appreciate that tonight. May we learn from these four seemingly insignificant creatures. I don't know why God made the spider. Some of them are poisonous. I don't know anybody that likes them. But maybe God puts the spider there to remind us, Hey, son, hey, child of God, you need to be dedicated. The conies are not a, a strong animal probably not sought after to be hunted after they're feeble but God says maybe God says listen I want you to learn something from them I want you to learn to make your habitation the Lord when the storms come the ants they're not strong but God says maybe I want you to look at that ant I want you to look at it differently next time you see an ant I want you to learn to be preparing yourself for eternity the life that's coming and prepare yourself for now spiritually so that you can lead others down that spiritual route God says about that locust, look at the locust differently. Communicate. Learn to communicate with God. Learn to communicate with your spouse. Talk things out. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Let's stand together all over the building. The altar's open. Would you come right now tonight? The altar's open. If God has spoke to your heart, perhaps you're not saved tonight. If you're not saved, you need to trust Christ, your Savior. We'll talk to you about that. Show you how I can know for sure you're going to heaven. If you would, if you don't know that, would you come tonight? you have a need, whatever it may be, perhaps you want to come around the altar and say, Lord, help me to be more dedicated. Lord, help me to prepare. Lord, help me to more, be more communicative unto you. Whatever the need is, would you come tonight? Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for helping me tonight. I pray, Father, that you would help us to learn from these really seemingly, seemingly insignificant creatures, but you made them for a purpose, to honor and glorify you, to perhaps to remind us of some things that we need to be mindful of. And Proverbs is so full of these things. We touched on just a few verses of many. Help us to be students of your word and readers of the book of Proverbs to gain wisdom from things on a daily, regular basis. Father, help us. I believe this is the greatest church in the world because of the spirit of the people, the spiritual well-being of the people, and I, I know that that comes from being a student of your word. And I pray that you'd help us to continue to get in your word on a daily basis, not just some church time, but in our personal time, even if it's not five but ten minutes. Father, help us find ourselves in your word. We love you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated tonight. And uh, we're going to go over these prayer requests before we're dismissed tonight. And I have several uh, that I want to go over with you. 
and then um, uh, we will um, uh, have outspoken prayer requests as well. We want to pray for our country. We want to pray for America, and uh, America needs the Lord. And I encourage you to pray for our leaders and that, that they would do right and not in, in the sight of God. Let's pray for our churches. There's some churches are, uh, in our region that are battling COVID right now, and so let's pray for them. We uh, we're still distancing out here. I understand uh, the the Delta and all that. Uh, we're still distancing out here. And, we still have the uh, air purification system going on, so we still have that uh, going on the air. And so we're just, you know, be careful, but, you know, hey, listen, we're going to keep shaking hands, Lord willing, amen. And uh, we're going to keep using, shaking hands and using Germex, amen. And uh, be careful but not fearful. Can I get an amen? Uh, we need to be careful but not fearful, and so let's keep that in mind. And, um, and then also um, um, uh, remember to pray for our families. I know we have... Uh, families that are out of town, and so let's pray for them. Still vacation time. We, I had folks, uh, I had a couple leaving Sunday night, said, Pastor, we're, we'll be back. We're just going to be gone for a little bit, out uh, vacationing, so forth. And so pray for all our families that are traveling. One day, we're going to get everybody here. And one, when everybody's here, we're probably going to have to bring some more of those chairs from Heritage all over here. And so I look forward to that day, Lord willing. Do continue to pray for all of our shut-ins. The list is long in the back of the bulletin. I want to encourage you to remember all of them. I uh, do pray for uh, Larry Bowles, if you will, so my dad's uncle, uh, his physical well-being there, and Kenny Moore. I spoke to Novella um, here yesterday, I believe, and uh, pray for Kenny, if you will, not, not doing well, and pray for uh, Novella as well. Miss Aline Andrews, she's on here, and we'll continue to pray for her, but it's so good to see her. Continue to remember her in prayer. She continues to recover. And then also Susan Whitehart. Miss Susan Whitehart, her husband, passed away yesterday. We mentioned in our services, uh, I think on Sunday, that he was in hospice care. I went, go, went to go see him yesterday. While I was there, he passed away. And so you pray for her, and of course that's hard for her. That funeral, if you would like to attend that, uh, that will be, uh, the viewing will be uh, Friday from 1 to 2 uh, at Forsyth Memorial Park. The, they've just built a brand new building. And Ms. Whitehart told me that's where it's at. So the viewing from 1 to 2 Friday for South Memorial Park there in the new building. Uh, and uh, the funeral service will be at 2 there and in the chapel. So keep that in mind, if you will. Uh, I know that would be an encouragement to her to see some of you folks. Lawrence Miller, continue to pray for Lawrence. Uh, Hannah Craig's grandson, pray for him. I need to call her and find out how that procedure went. Does anybody know? Has anybody talked to her about her grandson's procedure? So pray for him, if you will, out in California. She... That's a very uh, big burden for her, so pray for uh, his, uh, her grandson. Tom Fletcher, uh, Beverly Smith, continue to pray for Miss Beverly as the doctors uh, look at what to do with the cancer situation, so make that a man of prayer. I know that you are. Larry Burton, this is a brain tumor. Uh, Frank, Frank, you want to give us an update on him? Amen. And uh, so do pray for Larry Burton tonight. Rick, Ricky Bennett, I got a good report from Robert, said he's doing better. And so we thank God for that. Continue to pray for Miss Martha. She's still mean. And uh, then I'm just picking Miss Martha. I love, some of you just got that. So, uh, or you're looking at Miss Martha and seeing if she's got a gun over there. And, um, and I, I'm joking about Miss Martha. She's very kind to me most of the time. Ricky Bennett, I love Miss Martha. I love Robert Martha. They're like my grandparents. I like to pick with them a little bit too much, but I love them. But uh, do pray for Ricky Bennett. He's not out of the woods yet, but he is making a uh, good improvement, and uh, so thank the Lord for that. And then John Rucker, David Wall had mentioned to me that John Rucker is going to have a procedure sometime soon, so do pray for him, if you will, please. And uh, then, um, uh, then Andrew, this is Richard Melissa's son, she just told me he's going to have a surgical procedure coming up sometime soon in the future, so do pray for him, if you will, tonight, all right? Does anybody have any outspoken prayer requests tonight? Miss Kay? Okay. 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 Remember Wyatt Pendry, and then also um, do pray for uh, this lady who lost her husband, Miss Kay's facility. Anybody else tonight? Okay, Houston. Okay, two special prayer requests, remember that. Anybody else tonight? Okay, Miss Lisa. Thank you, 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, pray for Charlie tonight. Okay. Pray for Yeah, Charlie Bull. So okay, Miss Okay, let's pray for this past this family's past this family's pastor tonight. Anybody else tonight? All right, going slow. Okay, if you have an unspoken prayer request tonight, would you raise your hand? And God knows what that need is. And let's take that to the Lord in prayer and ask God to meet these needs tonight according to His will. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We come to you once again tonight. And we're so grateful for our church family. We love this place where we can come and fellowship one with another. Father, hear the word of God. Share our prayer requests one with another. And Father, I pray that you'd help every one of these requests, these needs tonight. You've heard them. You know what each one are. You know how to intervene. You know how to provide physically and emotionally, mentally and spiritually. And I pray for these that have lost their loved ones. I pray that you comfort them and give them grace and strength and help during this time right now. I think about Miss Whitehart and so many others. But tonight there's been even others that have been mentioned tonight. Father, I pray that you'd help uh, every outspoken prayer request tonight that's been made mentioned. And Father, these unspoken prayer requests, Father, the needs behind the heart. Father, these uplifted hands, you know the needs. And I pray that you'd answer them according to your will. Father, I pray for that you continue to help our country, help America to turn back to you and do right. And I know help our government leaders, whether it's state or federal uh, or local leadership roles in our country. Father, help them to make godly decisions for our country. Please bless Israel, Father, and help them help our government leaders to support in Israel. And I pray that you would give them peace. And I pray that you would be with our missionaries all over the world tonight. Give them safety and protection and use them to win souls and start churches or whatever the ministry is that you've called them into. I pray that you'd use them and help them tonight. Father, I pray that you would help our church. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise and credit and thanksgiving for what you've done and what you're doing. Even during the summer vacation time, uh, COVID issue time, you're still so good to us. And we ask that you continue to put your hedge of protection around right about us. Continue to give us safety and protection. And continue to give us good health and strength. Father, help us to live the Christian life as you've intended us to. Help us to live in victory. Help us to keep our minds and eyes upon you and our, our hearts receptive and tender towards you. Help us to walk with you in prayer and Bible reading. Walk and live and, uh, and uh, be filled and led by you, Holy Spirit. Help our marriages. Help our kids. Father, please help this church grow and build this church in every aspect, financially and numerically and spiritually. Give us true revival in every believer's heart, revival as a whole. You know what we stand in need of tonight. And I pray that you bless abundantly above all that we could even ask or think. Thank you again for what you're doing. We give you all the credit for it all. Please continue to bless. And we'll thank you for all that you do. We love you. Thank you for this place, this people, and their willingness, their faithfulness to come to church tonight. We love in Jesus' name. Amen. You can stand together all over your, the building tonight. We're going to be dismissed. I want to thank you so much for being here tonight. And uh, if you're glad you came, would you say amen? I love you. Great crowd. Good looking crowd for this Sunday or Wednesday night. And uh, so good to see you. Turn around, fellowship one with another. And uh, God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning, Lord willing. Don't forget about all the events, the sign-up sheets, Saturday morning uh, visitation, men's prayer, Saturday night, all the services on Sunday. God bless you. You're dismissed.